Hello and welcome to this board game review from Tantrum House. Today's video is for the game Genotype from Genius Games. <laughs> Welcome back, my name is Jonah Dew, and like I mentioned, this review video is a comprehensive look at the game Genotype from Genius Games. Genotype is for one to five players, it takes about 45 to 75 minutes to play, and in this video we're going to have an inside look at a couple categories about the game. We're going to take a look at components and quality. We're going to have a conversation around overall gameplay, and we're going to see how that ties into the overall theme of this game. However, before we move any further, I've got to give you a little insight into Genius Games if you're not aware. Genius Games makes games themed around science. Almost each game that they have not only comes complete with all the elements that you've come to expect around a full tabletop comprehensive board game, but also will be scientifically correct with explanation around and behind the science that's featured in the game. So if you're not familiar with this game, Genotype, the game's theme is about Gregor Mendel, the Austrian scientist who's known as the father of modern genetics. Let's take a look at some components and quality and a brief introduction into gameplay. The game takes place over five rounds and each round is split into three phases. In phase one, all players jockey for position while you're preparing for the dice draft of phase two. Phase two is of course the dice draft where players take turns choosing dice that match the corresponding traits on your pea plants. In phase three, you buy perks and upgrades to better your garden and get an advantage on the other players. The overall quality of this game is exactly what you'd expect from a full-size one to five player tabletop game. I personally wouldn't say that there's any components that stand out as exceptional design or quality. However, we do have some really cool design characteristics with the pea plant leaves and player color spades and even the first player marker. And I'm a sucker for an on-theme player meeple or pieces instead of just like the standard circles or whatnot. Now let's chat about overall gameplay. Like I mentioned previously, the game is played over a number of rounds where the main focus over half of the game board is centered around plant breeding, where you would take offspring die dice and you try to validate a corresponding trait on one of your pea plants. This can be tough to master because there's rules around the order that players get to select these traits and dice, and the game also has action spaces that allow you to manipulate the punnet squares of a certain pod color of plants. So you definitely need to watch out for the other players who might take that action and leave you with no way to fulfill your traits on your pea plants. This aspect of the game provides a good amount of variation and uniqueness. However, the majority of the variation in the game comes from the assistance and tool cards. These two things give the game the next level of replayability for me. The assistants provide variable and powerful ongoing benefits, which a lot of times enhance other actions on the game board. Things like when you take a dice to validate a trait, you can actually validate every copy of that same genotype on any or of your other pea plants, or once per working phase, you can pay a coin to validate a trait and you don't have to worry about actually taking a die. The tool cards provide one-time benefits, so using a tool card wisely can change the dynamic of the game as well. The tool cards range from drawing pea plant cards out of turn to gaining additional coins for some of your actions. Phase three of the game is so important if you want to play well. This is the phase where you can buy perks and upgrades, and there's an entire section, kind of a little square on the game board dedicated to this. Uh, here's the catch. When you purchase a perk or upgrade, the price of that particular item immediately increases by one, making it more expensive for the next player. Multiple players can do this action, and at the end of the round, the price only drops by one coin. So you could have the very best action that now is very expensive and instead of affordable, which kind of will adjust your gameplay. It's so crucial to get new plots or extra dice slots, which are some of those perks and upgrades that you can manage. And if you manage this aspect of the game well, you'll definitely have a shot to win. This game incorporates the science behind Gregor Mendel's pea plant experiment very, very well, while still being a competitive, worker placement, dice rolling tabletop game. The game actually comes with an entire booklet behind the science of this game, 
So whether you're into learning new things or not, it's definitely prepared to teach you a thing or two. This game also has a solo mode, so if you're a player that plays games alone, you'll find a home with Genotype as well. I've personally thought that this game held up well as a medium weight game with enough replayability and action selection that it could easily be a game to add not only to your collection, but get to the table for family game night or game night with friends or however you like to do things. Anyway, thanks for watching another review out of Tantrum House. If you like what we've got going on here, then make sure you like our videos, give us a comment about your favorite genius game, and we'll see you guys next time.